The Holy Spirit clearly instructed me to share this message with the body of Christ, specifically the online community. So I'm being obedient to share that word right now. Now, you know how very rarely I say that the Holy Spirit has given me something specific like this, but this is what the Holy Spirit says. I'm tired of all the bickering. I'm tired of inflated egos. I'm tired of the gossip being excused as commentary. I'm tired of the public assaults on my ministries being excused as obedience to me. I never told you to attack one another. You're lying to yourself if that's what you think. Your need to be right makes me sick. Your division has grieved my heart. Chasing clicks and views, you've traded truth for trends. Your hunger for entertainment has replaced your desire for the sacred. I'm calling my church to unity, to love. I'm calling you to take the way of peace. Get back to what matters. Don't miss the opportunities before you. Now is not the time for division, but multiplication. Much of what matters to you now will not matter when you stand before me. All that will be allowed to remain is what you truly did for me with pure motives and the souls that were won. Stop trying to win arguments and get back to winning souls. So that's what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do. That's the word he put on my heart. And this is why I've always made it a point to never attack another man or woman of God or even another ministry for that matter. You'll never see me do that, nor would I want to do that. And only by the Holy Spirit's grace have I kept myself from that sort of toxic drama. And that's one of the reasons I believe that God has favored and raised this ministry the way that he has. So that's a side tip. That's some ministry wisdom for those of you just beginning in ministry. Stay away from toxic divisions and drama. It's not going to further your ministry. Stay away from attacking other men and women of God. I wouldn't dare use the Holy Spirit's platform for such things. And this is why it's grieved my heart to see divisions in the church. I've watched as believers attack each other online, and not just believers, but also Christian leaders. Please, people of God, we need to pray against this satanic assault. We all have a responsibility to use what God has given us for His glory. I'm not excused from that responsibility, which is why I'm speaking out right now. Ministry influence isn't a reward. It's a responsibility. That's why I'm making a plea. That's why I'm using this platform to make a plea to the body of Christ. This is a call to unity because I love the church. I'm calling on every believer, every Christian leader, all of us to stay focused on God's calling and to please stop attacking one another. It's not just breaking my heart. It's deeply grieving the Holy Spirit. The enemy is seeking to divide the church. Don't do his work for him. We are in a time of great moves of the Holy Spirit. And in these times, not every church, not every ministry, not every believer is going to agree on every point of doctrine or ministry methodology. But we, the body of Christ, must seek unity, love, and peace above all, despite our differences. Now, of course, it's at this point that someone will feel the need to write something in the comment section like, but David, we have to call out error when we see it. And I agree with you. When someone is teaching or preaching another gospel, when someone is speaking contrary to the fundamentals of the faith, then of course that must be called out. But that is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about ministry methods and doctrinal disagreements that aren't cause for division. Now, here's how you can keep yourself from falling for this sneaky strategy of Satan. Number one, look for agreement. What we believe about Christ, his life, death, bodily resurrection, what we believe about the Bible, its authority, its divine inspiration, what we believe about sin, its consequences, its need to be avoided, the preaching of the cross and repentance, these are some of the fundamentals around which the true believers can unify. Jesus said, your love for one another will prove to the world 
You are my disciples. That's John 13, 35. Number two, remain teachable. None of us know everything. And while the word of God is perfect, our understanding of it is often flawed. The scriptures are inerrant, not our interpretation of it. This is why we all need to remain teachable. Sometimes, and we just have to accept this, sometimes the Bible will contradict what we've been taught, what we deeply believe, what we've heard in someone else's stories, and even how we interpret the things that we ourselves have experienced. The truth of the matter is, if the Bible doesn't ever contradict what you believe, it's not the Bible you believe, it's yourself. This is why we must remain teachable and humble. In God's river, there are many streams, and each of us can learn something from the other. For example, I as a charismatic believer have been greatly blessed by the Bible study methods of the Baptists. As someone who believes in free will, I have come to admire the passion of those who believe in absolute predestination. As a believer in the continuing activity of the spiritual gifts, I still hold great respect in my heart for cessationists, simply because they too love our wonderful Lord. All of us, in some way, could be more like Jesus in what we do and teach. So, we must come to appreciate the varying voices within the safety of biblical truth. Number three, don't take disagreement personally. Pastors and ministers, I say this to you in love. There are people who teach differently than you on certain topics. You're just going to have to accept that. If you take differences in doctrines as personal attacks, you'll always find yourself in toxic battles and theology wars. If you perceive differences as slights, then for you, the battles will be never ending. You'll waste your time arguing with people who aren't even thinking of you. And then you'll never be able to focus on your calling. In fact, there will be something lost in your ministry. The people will see it, even if you don't. You see, it's ego that takes it personal. Ego says it's all about me, and thus ego will be offended at the existence of other opinions. But maturity says, just because they don't agree with my doctrines, just because they teach differently than I do, doesn't mean they're coming against me personally. Just because they teach and believe differently, doesn't mean I have to attack them. We must take the humble and mature path of simply agreeing to disagree. For example, I have friends in ministry who disagree with me on a number of doctrines, but we still fellowship. We still support one another, pray for one another, and speak well of one another. In fact, there's hardly ever a discussion around our disagreements. I thank God that he's surrounded me with seasoned ministers who can unite despite differences. People of God, there are believers who believe differently than you do on certain side issues. This doesn't mean they're against you, nor does it mean you should be against them. Again, yes, I acknowledge, we all agree, there are times to call things out. And yes, there are times for division. We have to divide from actual heretics, but I'm not talking about violating the fundamentals of the faith. I'm talking about your true brothers and sisters who see some things differently than you do. Don't take disagreements personally. Number four, disagree biblically. When you do disagree, do it biblically. Don't treat disagreement like sin. I've seen some believers attempt to do this to one another and it's so manipulative. They frame the other person's disagreement as sin that needs to be repented of. And then they say things like, I gave them a chance to change. Let's see if they humble themselves and repent of what they believe and teach. I went to them privately and tried to convince them and now I'm going public. And in instances of heresy, that would definitely apply. Biblically speaking, there are times to take things publicly, but that's the biblical protocol for sin, not disagreement. How would you respond if someone did that to you? They tried to manipulate you like that. It amazes me that when people passionately declare what we believe, we say, my goodness, they're bold. But when people passionately declare what we don't believe, we say, my goodness, They're arrogant and prideful. Let's give each other the benefit of the doubt that it's not a matter of pride, 
but of conviction and principle. Stop treating differences as if it's sin. Again, that's manipulation. Besides, you don't have the authority to correct everyone. Not everyone falls under your spiritual covering or within the realm of your personal fellowship. We as believers sometimes should correct one another, but that comes through relationship. Even the apostles brought about rebuke through relationship. And again, yes, publicly call out blatant heresy, but not every disagreement constitutes heresy. You don't have to make a public display of everything. You don't have to be mean-spirited. You don't have to cause chaos and drama. This goes for all believers in all church settings and in all ministries. Number five, stay away from drama. There exists a very toxic culture online that justifies gossip under the pretense of conversation. Have no part of that. Ministers and preachers, you're not building a social media platform. You're building a ministry, so do it God's way. Let the Holy Spirit's class, elegance, and grace guide you in all you do. Believer, don't contribute to the chaos. Don't waste your time on chaos, drama, and toxic conversations. Bottom line, we must love and honor each other. This is a call for you to pray for the unity of the church. And if it just so happens that you are participating in division, repent, receive forgiveness, and move on. Don't live in that shame. I'm not speaking this message to shame anyone, but to encourage the body of Christ. Together, we can do more than we could ever do alone. Together, we are the church. This message is for all believers who follow this ministry. This is my plea to the body of Christ. Please rise above the noise. Choose the Holy Spirit's way. Choose unity. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.